Hey everybody. Um, so I, I'm back for another review you of Real Housewives of Potomac in a pickle season eight, episode four. Um y'all forgive me if this episode I mean not episode, but review. I'm doing my best. I got an appointment with my doctor. I, I really don't know what's wrong, but it's 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 a lot of pain. It like hurt my lower back and I feel nauseous. I don't know what it is. I really don't. Um but yeah. So um once again, thank you to all of you who continue to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. So please be sure if you're watching this um, to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and, you know, I, I appreciate it. All right, so In a Pickle is the name of this episode. We get Naneka and Ike, who, but nothing else. And like I said, the first episode, I think, first or second episode, and I was like, I think Naneka's going to get on my nerves. And I still think she may, but not in this episode. Okay, just not. Okay, so she picks up her husband from the airport. Apparently her husband, we know he's a doctor, but he does travel medicine. So basically he'll spend one week away, come back home for a week, one week away. That's just the way his schedule set up. Um, which has impacted their sex life um, to the point where it impacts her ovulation, right? And she wants to really have a baby. So Kieran calls Naneka to invite her to a pickle game. Um, Naneka doesn't even know what Pickle is. Naneka, at least, I'll give her this, at least had the decency, okay, to be kind and nice and grateful for an invitation. Like, for once in forever, okay, in the history of this show, she actually seemed genuinely happy to be invited to a place, and it seemed refreshing that she was grateful for it. Not like, oh, I was expecting to call because I know I'm a cast member of this show. It just seemed, it was just nice to see somebody grateful for something for a change. Okay? Because um, we know that kind of stuff don't usually last long. Anyway, so the husband kind of co-signs her story. The husband, Ike. Um, the spelling throws me off. Um, the husband kind of co-signs the story by not, basically by not denying the story about Wendy's family submitting her name to the shrine. Um, apparently, Eddie has kind of shunned Ike too. And Wendy has done the same with Aneka. Honestly, I believe it. I believe it, I believe it, and I'll get into a more why I said last week I believed it. Wendy is one of those people who have learned to pretend like nothing is happening, and it's her passive aggressive way of doing things that are hurtful to other people, because she really ain't about that life, and people get to throw in hands. But, but I don't trust her, and she's whack, okay? And she showed how whack she was in this episode. Giselle and Robin meet up. <sighs> okay, was I the only one confused about why Giselle said the place was packed and there were hardly um, any places to sit and then the camera shows all these chairs and open tables everywhere? Like, Giselle, do you lie that much? Are you that regularly deluded? Because I'm not here for it. Anyway, and also, also, okay, why does Giselle specifically and Robin also why does their weave look so bad? Giselle puts weave in her hair and it always looks like weave. Like, you know, like the key is that people want to make it look real, not a real mess. And Giselle, you give it every time. I mean, Robin's is better than usual this episode, but we know she'll go back. But Robin also, once in a while, we see her like, you know, her natural hair up in like a little ball or something. But Giselle puts in weave and her hair still looks messy and she hangs out with her hairdresser. I don't know if it's her hairdresser, the quality of weave or whatever's going on, but do better. All right, and cause you on TV, we, we ain't here to talk about my hair. I am nobody's fashionista, I don't claim to be and I also ain't on nobody's big screen TV. Anyway, so, um, <coughs> excuse me, it hurts. Oh my gosh, I don't know why, what's going on with me? So Robin said um, she is going to the pickle game, okay? But she doesn't care about what people think about her and Juan. Yes, you do, Robin. Okay, we don't. We, I mean, I don't care, but I think you do because you spend a lot of time covering. Then Giselle brings up that she and Juan had a conversation, and he was yelling at her and unhappy with Giselle talking about how he was lying about being with these women. Robin says, "Well, look, I know y'all had a conversation, but she doesn't know anything else." Then Giselle tells Robin that he was yelling at her. And Robin's response, Robin says something, wow. I mean, wow. Robin goes, well, his hearing is bad. And Giselle was like, what? And I'm not going to lie. I was with Giselle on that. Like, huh? Where are you going with this? She was like, it's bad from coaching because he's used to yelling. So he talks louder than he used to. Talking loud and yelling at somebody, particularly in anger, 
are two different things. And Robin, I hope you're not that goddamn dumb, but you at least dumb enough to believe somebody would be that dumb to believe it. Okay? And we know Giselle is keen enough, especially when she's in other people's business, never her own, but she's keen enough when it comes to other people's business to not do that. I'm not saying Giselle didn't deserve to be yelled at because I do believe that. But I'm over this dumb shit, okay? And Robin, you stay putting out dumb fuck shit. So then Robin is in the confessional talking about, girl, stop, he wasn't yelling. Well, bitch, how you know? How you know? You said you just knew they talked. This is what I can't, I can't, I can't. Robin has got to be the wackest bitch I have ever seen make it to eight seasons on a hit reality show. Like, I, I just don't know how else we as viewers can make it clear to the Bravo community why this bitch should not be on this show. Who is making that decision every season? She don't ever talk about that. All she does is defend him, and it's annoying. She, she wanted to defend him fine. That's her man, but we don't want to see it because it's old. And it's the same thing. And I really think it's because Robin, but she's a weak-ass bitch, so she doesn't stand up for herself. But I do think she could be the person on the show, like a Cynthia Bailey, if she, not because she's pretty, but uh, <laughs> she could be the Cynthia Bailey kind of peacemaker, appear that way if she wasn't so fucking dumb in other parts of her life. Cynthia Bailey was not stupid in other parts of her life. She wasn't. All right, we can say she was kind of the kind, kind of meek one. But Cynthia Bailey, you can tell by the way she talked and checked people, Cynthia Bailey was not stupid. <laughs> she wasn't. She was nice, but not stupid. All right. Anyway, so Robin's weak ass starts telling Giselle all the details she got from the NECA in their first conversation. And the NECA was even, whether she was genuine or not, was at least nice enough to be friendly to you at that housewarming because she could tell just by watching that it looked like people were beating up on you. And they were. A pile up is never fun. I don't like Robin, but that's what y'all doing. And this shit is old. It's whack, 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 whack. That's why the season's been slow. Um, so she tells the story about the shrine, okay? Okay, let's just go ahead and clear something up. And I want anybody listening to me to listen all the way through, especially this part, okay? Um, at least for people watching this video, please feel free to share this knowledge and information because I think this is important. Let me explain to you what voodoo is or is not voodoo is actually not even a real thing first of all the religion for which they are even speaking of that they think they know about is called voodoo okay and it has been mistitled as voodoo over the centuries because especially by people in the united states and in europe because they misheard it through the dialects of other people okay so so fuck off on that one that's number one number two let me be sure it is not about pinning dolls and killing people. That is not a thing, okay? They saw those kind, that kind of witchcraft by a few blacks and started calling it voodoo, okay? According to them, white people in their shit. Voodoo, darlings, is a Christian religion, okay? And it has been practiced in places like Haiti for centuries, okay? And the Cubans have something very similar. Both of those places are primarily filled with African descended people, dark people. I, the ones who immigrate over here from Cuba are white and couldn't stand after the revolution because they couldn't continue to exploit people the way they were used to it. Catch. That's why the ones you meet over here are so racist. That's why. Okay? Anyway, the Santeria in Cuba was very similar to what we know as voodoo. In other words, in Haiti and in Cuba, the French were Catholic, heavily Catholic, and tried to Christianize the enslaved. The um, Spanish were heavily Catholic and tried to Christianize their enslaved. Spain colonized Cuba, the French colonized Haiti. So what they did, all of these are African descended people from various places, but because the Christian religion was forced on them, the United States, that did not happen, that's another story. Um, they have so many Catholic saints, if you know anything about the Catholic religion, Catholic saints that they'll pray to, so on and so forth. They replaced the Catholic saints in their way with African gods. And this is how they merge those Western African traditions with Christianity. And if it ain't wrong for the Catholics to have saints and still believe in one God, it is not wrong to call on the quote unquote gods, which are people they look to for help, right? And just because we don't call them gods, it doesn't, they made them their saints, okay? That is what the difference is. Okay, do you want to know why it's been demonized, especially? 
Let me tell you, okay, because I need y'all to get this. Because the Haitians took Christianity and used it to justify their liberation, their bloody battle for freedom, for being owned as property, okay? And they were successful, okay? Now, yes, does France do a lot of other things to undercut them, and that's why they're one of the poorest countries in the nation, but let me explain something to you. They use Christianity, once again, to justify their liberation, not their enslavement. Okay, and became the first free democratic republic in the Western Hemisphere. And that to white people and white powers that are still benefiting from colonization, neo-colonialism, because don't think this shit has disappeared. That's a threat to them. That's why they can say when Haiti has earthquakes, oh, it's because they have false gods. No, it isn't. It isn't. Okay, that, that ain't got nothing to do with the nation anyway. But not in that way. But I, I'm making a fucking point. Okay, so I say this because Robin called it voodoo last week and it was some bullshit and, you know, I heard that there's Nigerians pissed off about it, but a lot of the people that are even pissed off about it that are Nigerian are also people who believe voodoo is exactly what I just told you, poking dolls and believing in false gods. They don't even know what the fuck they're mad about. Okay, because anti-blackness is real and it's all across this fucking globe. Okay, and let's not forget Nigerians were colonized by the English. Okay. So, and now most information will be misspread because people are going to watch this show and just hear it, believe it, da 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 All right, so neither Wendy nor Neneka clearly know anything about Voodoo, and Voodoo is actually not a Nigerian religion. It is a result of people who were enslaved, merging their tradition by having Christianity forced on them and believing in God, a God that liberated them. Okay? You think I'm lying to making this up? You are welcome to read the book, Black Spartacus. You are welcome to watch the first episode of Black in Latin America, a PBS special, which actually explains this well. Um, I would not necessarily support the other ch episodes two, three, and four because they were fully done historically, but that one was done well. I am not pulling this stuff out the side of my neck, but when I see African descended people misrepresented and by people who claim to be smart, I'm offended. Anyway, Candace and her mother. So she's complaining to her mother in that fucking new ha house she got with more space than people um, about how her two dishwashers aren't very good. I can tell you, you can stop using that cascade. You need to use finished pods. But nevertheless, we know Candace ain't here for no housework. Anyway, um, bitch, buy new ones or shut the fuck up. We don't care, okay? We, people got real problems. Um, she asked her mother to buy her one as a tour gift. Candace... The fact that you, and, and I know we can say, oh, it's a joke when we say, oh, buy me one, buy me one. But since Candace has been so heavily dependent on her mother her entire life, it, it to me is annoying. It's just annoying. So Candace calling road life ghetto while we're on offensive bullshit. And I know that term is so fraught at this point because people have misused it. But since I'm on a roll, let me just go ahead. Okay, let me be clear, all right? Ghettos are where people are placed and confined and I do mean confined, and discriminated against in every way possible, education, employment, race, gender, uh, 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 job opportunity, every single thing you can think, okay? And that's purposeful. And black people have been the case study and test case, hell, which inspired South African apartheid. Okay, so when people say things like, it's ghetto, and somebody like Candace who always flaunts how much she has, I think that's why it's offensive when it comes out of her mouth. The same reason why when she said um, Monique had very hood behavior, that's what pissed me off because I knew where it was coming from, that black elitist space that I resent, okay? Yeah, all right? Anyway, so then Dorothy asked her, well, what's Chris doing these days for work? Bitch, you always up in your daughter's business and your daughter always telling you, you know. But anyway, and um, so she tells her. Her mother asked, is he making any money doing that? And so Candace goes, no, mom. He's not making any money at all, right? Sarcastically. Now, Candace, the fact that you are asking your mother, like I said, even about these stupid-ass dishwashers, to buy anything and you are supposed to be making your own money, it is giving I'm always going to depend on my mother. And I'm not talking about emotionally like most of us have and do. Okay, I'm not even talking about that because that's a natural affection and love that just comes with having a mother and child. I'm talking about material dependence. If you're asking your mother to buy anything and you are supposed to be making your own money, it's giving, I'm always going to be depending on my mother 
and I endure this bullshit and disrespect from her toward me and my marriage because I'm afraid of losing access to these material things. And I need you to grow the fuck up and harden up because the rest of us fucking been on our own. Not that we couldn't go home per se, like, you know, for a break. Okay, but have been roughing it <laughs> since 18. Okay, and even then we were lucky that we were able to go to college. Still, loans and all, it don't matter. We were still fortunate. So just miss me with the bullshit, okay? And your mom wants to t wants you to talk to Robin. You want to know why? Because she really doesn't mind the fact that Robin was willing to help lie on your husband, okay? And she thinks if she can get y'all back together as friends, you'll eventually be influenced by that bullshit and be miserable like your mother who's supposed to be married, have all this money and all this shit, and she's still not happy, okay? Candace, you a dumb bitch for letting that happen over and over again. The fact that you say you go home uh, with Chris and you're uncomfortable because they've seen how your mother talks about him on TV, that should be enough. That should be enough. And I'm not saying you shouldn't work on your relationship with your mother, but I am saying you shouldn't work on it in front of the camera where she can so overtly disrespect him, and then he has to, one, either hear about this from you and see it on TV or see it on TV, period. Because it's fucked up. It's fucked up. And you need to grow up. Anyway, if you okay with your man having a job that he has, your mother shouldn't have shit to say about it. But she can because she kind of own you and you allow it to have. At this point, you're allowing it. Anyway, so Karen's pickleball game. Karen came in all green with Ray. I was happy to see Ray. I was. It's been a minute. Anyway, so Giselle comes first because she doesn't have a life or anything else to do. Um, Karen shades Giselle, per use, okay, and says, I'm enjoying you, and you've been fine. And she says, I'm always fine. And she said, you're right, since you got a man. I said, yes, Karen. <laughs> go off, go off. Okay, but Karen went through, okay, because she read her. She was like, I find it funny that Giselle has a man and that she's spending time on herself. And she said, and I think that's a good thing for Giselle. But we still haven't seen him. She said, Pastor lives in the phone, but we haven't even seen this one at all. Not even in the phone. She was like, where is he living? Outer space? I said, damn, Karen. Damn, you going for broke. And um, she's going to bring her friend Cal, which we know is Giselle's plus one for a lot of things. And there's nothing wrong with having, a, you know, a good friend or whatever. Um, but I told y'all she hired an actor on the first episode. We could tell. It wasn't even believable. All right, so Candace and Giselle don't speak. Okay, because of all the shit last season when she lied on, lied on Chris, lied, <laughs> lied on Chris. Keep it that way. You don't owe her shit. Okay, period. Next. Anyway, so Wendy is giving bother at this pickle game. She was giving real bother at the beginning, but I'm, I'm fitting. A, a, I got a lot to say on this. I think Wendy is a fake ass insecure bitch. Okay. Okay. So she is the kind that would do that kind of sneaky stuff behind someone's back because she can't face that shit face to face. That's not her, she can't do it, that's not her MO, okay? So her and Eddie are those types, I can tell, okay? And I can tell they practice this by the way they're covering for each other. It doesn't even seem natural. So I'm not really here for anybody on this cast with the exception of Karen, for the most part, and she can get it too where need be. However, Wendy is full of shit, and I really don't like this, but we are gonna get back to it. Robin and Juan show up, everybody has something to say. I don't know why, like I don't even, like when I tell you, I don't know that I could care less. I really don't know that I could if I wanted to care less about them. I just want them, the only thing I care about is getting them the fuck off this show, okay? They read him, but Mia, you calling wine out but not having a job. Baby, your husband doesn't either. So like, do you wanna go there? I don't think so. So I just think you should leave that alone. Okay, but we all know that you ain't got brain cells to first. Anyway, uh, so who told Robin to show up in that black leotard? It looked like something Tina Knowles made for the first single ladies video um, because she thought Beyonce would like it. And Beyonce said, no, mama, I just want a straight thing. And so she just put it somewhere in the, in the ditch and, y you know, uh, and clearly she had forgotten how small Beyonce was. Just made it a little bit bigger in the behind. And she ain't had time to go fix it. So she just gave her a whole new leotard. Anyway. And she came in black. Not white. It, it seemed to me that the, the invitation read white because that's what everybody else was giving. But okay. So when Karen said, what is Robin wearing? Vagina all out. And this is before, I was thinking all this stuff before Karen even said it. She said, what is Robin wearing? Vagina all out. Put it back. Don't nobody want it. Not even want. I said, damn. <laughs> damn. Ouch. 
damn Karen but Robin at this point you done lied all kinds of ways and the way you covered up Giselle's bullshit knowing she was fucking lying I mean I thought Giselle was lying anyway but that's not the fucking point I can't stand a bystander weak ass bitch like Robin so I oh well suck it up bitch anyway um then Juan is asking Ray how to play so Ray's watching him play and he was like so Juan is asking do you do threesomes or doubles and Ray goes no doubles he goes doubles at the most and he said oh so what they doing he said they just make a song <laughs> Ray is like I don't even give energy to this at this point I want to get to that point in my life where I just don't even give energy to shit like that anyway um did y'all notice Eddie doing the same shit to Ike uh, walking up introducing himself like he didn't know Ike from anywhere and they went to college together and the same way Wendy introduced herself to Neneka hi you know I'm Wendy like to try to act like they're being polite but they know they full of shit I'm not buying it I'm just I'm not so then Karen lets them eat okay she has catered the food and Karen did a good job now Karen begins by saying look I know that some of us are not in a good place she said I'm talking about the ladies okay and she started with Robert she said me and you we're not in a good place and you didn't have to come because of that but you did Karen didn't even go in as far as she could clearly she had let that energy for Giselle um she didn't go in as hard as she could have Robin and Robin sits there with this fake shout in like why is my name in it how did I get in it why are you talking about me she was talking about you to you which is more than I can say for that fake ass friend of yours Giselle before she had an intervention telling other people your business anyway Robin uh boo boo honestly the how did I get in it see how I get thrown in it was much funnier when Nene Lee did it originally the first time on the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion it's not even funny coming from you y'all fire this bitch please anyway um I can understand Juan not wanting to be in women's business I could actually understand that but whenever it gets tough for Robin whether it's a reunion whether it's a scene like this one he is nowhere to be found or he actively leaves her in that situation and that's what bothers me more than anything it's that that kind of, i mean like we know he don't fuck with her like that she don't fuck with him i don't even know why they're keeping up this lie but it's okay so they bring up the issue between wendy and the NECA. honestly i'm not sure how it got bad so quick and you know it could be editing but it just seemed like it just went um so the NECA said look I don't know her to have a problem with her and Wendy repeated she her she repeated it and said I don't know her to have a problem with her and then that goes didn't I just say that didn't I just say that okay now I did not think in that moment anything was wrong with Wendy saying the same thing she was affirming I thought Naneka's point however when somebody has already gotten on your motherfucking nerves it then starts to seem like you're just repeating what somebody says because you're ignoring them and trying to be the center of attention and that can piss somebody off also when you're already pissed off certain things just you're not gonna receive them right okay so let's just go ahead and say that now Neneka said what I am aware of and this is what I talk about when it just sped up like it just <laughs> um they didn't even go in on Ashley they were they didn't like Ashley escapes once again I just want y'all to call this bitch out but that's really not why they're at it though either so while Ashley was being messy as usual and somebody needs to molly wop her ass while we at it um that's really not why they mad at each other this shit existed anyway so the NECA was like I am aware of your mother saying that she was submitting my name to a shrine and my mother-in-law's and this that and the other and Wendy started nitpicking the statement she was like what I did not put your name in the shrine. I did not put your name in the shrine or something like that. And Wendy started nitpicking the statement by saying, I didn't call you. I didn't call you. And Neneka was talking about her mother. So Neneka said, okay, let me clear it up. Your mother did this. The point is what she's saying is that this was done to her by your family, Wendy. And Wendy, you know you're fucking behind it. And you're so cheap at the way you're behind it that you took your immediate family to do your dirty work so we could trace it. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's why Neneka was getting pissed off. 
okay? Period. All right, so Wendy starts saying, you've been a hater since day one. Since day one, I said since the housewarming or since the first time you met her. Right, anyway, and she's a flop, she's a flop. And I'm like, Naneka has receipts. Now granted, we don't know the number, we just know it's saved in somebody's name and we know people can play like that. So, uh, you know, but she did have that Good Friday date in her hand. Um, not a good day to be sending things to a shrine, okay? Um, anyway, so Karen comes out of nowhere and blames, <laughs> this was funny though. Karen comes out of nowhere and blames Giselle for the argument. She said, this is your fault. I know it's your fault. You were in the middle of it. And Giselle said, you and your green ass, <laughs> blame me. I see, it was funny because any other time Giselle is the center of the bullshit. And I don't think Giselle even understood the vocabulary that they were using to even be messy enough. Because honestly, she looked like genuinely confused. I'm sure she would have loved to stir that pot. But I don't think she would. I don't think she even understood the language they were using. I did, not that they were speaking another language, but the words they were using, Giselle couldn't follow. <laughs> it was that, and when when Karen did that, that was a way of kind of just breaking up the tension, at least for those two. See, Giselle, if you were more like that, we would rock with you the way we rock with you first season. But you just a bitch, and you've already shown that. Anyway, the conversation Eddie has with Juan in the background. And said, as long as they're not talking about you, man, because everybody want to talk about you. I was thinking myself, including your wife. Anyway, but they are in sync. And when I say they, I'm talking about Eddie and Wendy. They're in sync with covering up each other's bullshit. So one of the games that people kind of play in these situations is to really play calm when they know they've done a lot of shit. And that also aggravates the person who knows that you did the offense. Okay? So one of the games that these kind of educated good girls, if you will, is and I'm talking about Wendy, is to act like you have no idea when you know you have sent people like your family to do your dirty work and then pretend you have no idea. And yes, Wendy does strike me as a type who feels like she used her Nigerian heritage, her education, her come up and weaponized that every opportunity she got. Okay? And I feel like in that process, she was able to claim a space of you know, superiority and dominate the narrative the way she's Nigerian, right? And somebody like Naneka throws a wrench in that. Not because that's a bad thing, but how many times have we seen insecure people do this? How many times have we seen insecure people go out of their way to hurt somebody else who wasn't even thinking about them? That's why I can believe it, because I've seen people like that. So N Naneka jumped from zero to a thousand because she's been sitting on that shit and it's been pissing her off. And she's mad, and rightfully so. Rarely am I ever with Giselle or any parts of her crew, with the exception of her daughters, because they be reading them. But when Cal said, looked at her and said, Naneka is telling the truth, and Giselle was like, I know. That's how I felt too. Like, I, I believe her. I believe Naneka. So Candace, uh, miss us with the we don't want the two Nigerian girls fighting, okay? Miss me. You taunted and picked at Monique and got your head rocked. Cut it, all right? So stop acting like people from the same country same culture have to get along or necessarily get along because they have something in common sometimes people who are very much alike can't stand each other okay i've seen it i've experienced it um how often have we seen just in our own lives just ask yourself and think back family members that don't get along and they share blood um what is this thing i don't know what <laughs> this video thing is doing um or other black people or black women on the job purposely doing things to undermine and hurt other black people on the job and do stuff they wouldn't think of doing to white people. Think of doing things to you to hurt you. And I know because I've been there. Check my video on Black Herons. Um, just because they see you as the individual threat. Because they've learned to see themselves through the eyes of white people. And they hate you for it. So don't act like these things can't happen. Okay, so miss me with that. All right? The food turning over. And everybody and Candace saying that dumb shit. Oh, the demons have come to get us. So for people who claim to believe in God and think all oh, this is witchcraft. You really think demons have, these demons, like these char characters from some kind of cartoon, are really something to give that kind of energy to? Now granted, somebody can say that they thought that was funny, I didn't. And Juan actually turned over the food. Honestly, before Karen called out Juan, I just thought somebody was drunk, because Wendy was walking around with that bottle, and everybody was drinking. They was drinking alcohol like it was ginger ale or water. I said, somebody probably bumped into it, whatever. And, uh... <laughs> Karen was like, Juan, Juan, do you hate me? 
do you hate me that much that you turned on my phone? He was like, actually, no, I'm sorry. Bring it in. Bring it in. I'm really sorry. It was a mistake. But see, that's what happens when people are drinking and not paying attention. But please stop using terms, and this is to you, Wendy, like black magic that perpetuate these racist ideas about African and African descended people and were simply terms applied to black religious practices or cultural practices because white people didn't understand it. And it always is associated with something evil. And what you're really showing is your colonized mentality and especially the way, and, and somebody got mad at me um, on one of the episodes when I said it was given Nigerian scammer. Now that was meant to be a joke, but the bottom line is don't act like there aren't tensions between African Americans, Nigerian Americans, people who come from the Caribbean to America, and this assumption and this attitude of superiority over African Americans. Now that has been my experience, and I'm not just talking about person to person, peer to peer. I'm talking about even in the classroom, kids feeling the right to disrespect me and not wanting an African American teacher to tell them anything because I'm less than them. And I'm talking about kids as young as fourth and fifth grade. And it's insulting and it's offensive. And it's reified when I meet their parents at parent-teacher conferences. And they feel like they have the right to interrogate me and credentialize me. And don't have anything close to my education. And white people, yes, they do it too. But it's, it's, it's doubly offensive when you know that black people all get thrown into one group over here and get mistreated and quite frankly, people see y'all like they see us and you already know what I'm thinking. And if you don't, then fine. You are welcome to disagree, but what I'm not gonna do is pretend like that isn't the case. And that's why I'm calling that Wendy on her colonized mindset, okay? Anyway, so the excessive behavior, all of Wendy's extraness, okay, was giving guilty and liar. Like calling Mia to the side after calling her dumb and slow and making it clear she didn't like that bitch was so wack and it was so desperate. Like why not say, you know what, I want to talk to Candace right now because this is pissing me off and I'm about to go off because that's your friend. Instead of saying, you know what, Karen, I really need to talk to you because you set this whole thing up and I just need to, like that's who I need to get, get right with right now because I'm, I'm about to go off. Like there were other choices at that table. You could have pulled Ashley to the side. Like, because y'all had a misunderstanding, but y'all, well, not a misunderstanding, Ashley misled you. But to call Mia to try to prove that, no, you know how to get along with somebody else because you realize that you might have more enemies at that table than you have friends was whack. Because the gag is ain't none of y'all friends. The way y'all treat each other ain't, ain't none of y'all friends. Anyway, um, and the way you were trying to do that, it failed. And that's why people aren't buying it because it was so fake. Now, what y'all not going to do, Bravo, is show all those scenes with Wendy calling her uh, slow, dumb, a bitch, this, that, and the other, and act like Mia didn't throw that water in her face. I do not remember seeing y'all play part of that scene where Mia threw that water in her face for no reason and then act like Wendy's insults thereafter somehow were not deserved. I didn't appreciate that cutout, okay? Like I said, anybody can get it on this show. Anyway, but the excessive behavior of Wendy, but favor ain't fair. God worked overtime on me and clocked out for lunch for her. Those were very rehearsed reads, you could tell. And like I said, Wendy has never been that girl on the show for her family to be like trying to push Naneka off. Like Wendy's not the girl to get to. She's not the one with the connections. She's not the messy one in the group that people try to be friends with. That's Giselle. I hate that it's true, but that seems to be the way it goes. But Wendy, you're not that girl in the group like that. Okay, and that's why you're so insecure about it. Um, and I feel like Wendy has never been that girl on the show and her family is the type of people that feel like they're the exception to every rule. And so when another Nigerian has shown up, because Naneka was born in Nigeria, right? Shows up and actually has you know, education and money, because the bottom line is, in order to immigrate into this country, it is, ext through documentation, it is extremely difficult. Um, they only send, they only allow the best and the brightest, particularly from African countries, to come over, and it's the same with Asian countries especially. That's why you see disproportionate amounts of people from Europe able to integrate into this society, and by that I mean becoming naturalized citizens, over other people 
And so, yeah, they do always seem smarter. They do always seem like the more educated ones taking advantage of opportunities. But that's because they've been screened and screened and screened before they even allowed them over here. How many times have they sent Haitians back? Cubans are closer and don't get that same kind of treatment. Because once again, it's rooted in that fear I talked about earlier. These people who turned the world upside down and saw God as on their side to liberate themselves from enslavement. Yes, white people are still scared of it. That's how you know it's powerful. And it wasn't because they were sticking no pins in no damn dolls. If that was the case, they would have done it when the first slave ship came to get them from the West Coast to Africa. Who this stuff that made me mad, honey? Anyway, Neneka's husband, he ain't no punk though. He ain't no punk. I know his name is Ike and everything. And you know, I'm just, anyway, because he said, he got up in Eddie's face. He was like, you don't know me? He was like, I just met you today. And he was like, you, you don't know me. He was like, I just met you today. When people start repeating the same lines over again, especially since Eddie was trained as a lawyer, not that we really see him work or coming in from work, but nevertheless, um, they know how to manipulate words. They're trained that way to make, be able to make their arguments in court or in uh, you know depositions and things like that. They are very careful with that. And that was the, and that's what that's what pissed Ike off. And he was like, say it with your whole chest. And then Nick tried to tell him to stop. And he he cut her down the sides like, like this face. Now, Neneka and Ike were pissed off for the same reason why Kiki threw that water on Tisha. Okay? To be ignored and mistreated purposely and treated like you aren't there by people that you know you've met before and who have clearly, um, at the least, know at the least that they don't like you, is infuriating. Okay, that is what sets people off. It is, the, okay, it's not just over Facebook. It was a series of events, okay? Your mother sending Naneka's name to a shrine, claiming that she's doing all these terrible things, claiming that Naneka is trying to infiltrate the group. This, you know, all of that shit. That's the lead up. And so Eddie deleting you off of Facebook, and to Mia's point, you have to actively scroll and look to do that. And if you do that, it's because you know that. <laughs> because at this point, he's a public figure. Why would you care? He did that so him and Wendy would look like they were on the same page of not knowing these people. And that's some whack ass shit. It's whack. It's fucking whack, Eddie. Okay? And so Naneka explained the Facebook thing to Mia. Let's be clear. Mia took that shit back to the group. Not Naneka. Y'all, where was Gordon? Where was Gordon? <laughs> okay. And Mia took that shit back to the group after they had the pull aside that Mia was shocked about. Honestly, you know what? If you were a bad bitch talking about some I'm a bazooka, she thought she was bringing in guns, da 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 If you was a bad bitch like that, Wendy, you would have popped Mia when she threw that water on you because immediately your, your instincts would have taken over. So the fact that you could restrain yourself, the only reason why you ain't going to try to fight Naneka, well, the reason why you're talking like that is because you know Naneka probably won't fight you because Naneka got a whole lot more to lose. Um... Anyway, I will say, however, that this episode was much better than the last three, so we're seeing an improvement. Anyway, to be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it if you want, um, and I'll see y'all soon. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, see y'all later. Bye.